Hello family, welcome back. <laughs> so, for anyone that comes on new, welcome. My name is Shelly. Please refer to the Restored Site playlist. Start at the Truth Introduction video and go from there. The Lord Jesus Christ is calling His bride. And that's what He's doing on this channel. Hopefully, I can operate my phone better today. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. So, I am excited about this one. I'm going to give you the teaching first. And then I'm going to show you some revelations that came to Casey and I after the fact. The Lord is showing us some amazing things today, family. So, get excited. Um, anyone new, <laughs> my name is Shelly, and I'm teamed up with a sister named Casey, and the Lord uses both of us together to stand for two witnesses for all His glory and all that He's doing, so we can confirm each other, because the Lord does everything with two or more witnesses. Please excuse any background noise. I have a million fur babies and they like to make noise. <laughs> okay. This is called Mine Arm 227-2023-901 AM start time. I will write your words, Lord Jesus, through Sister Casey, page one. My loves, this day I brought... Hebrew 248 to my servant Casey. At the time, she understood not. On her travels this morning, she obediently captured the sky before her and asked, What have you shown me, Lord? A 8.22 a.m., which I led her to Judges 5.28. Here are the pictures of the sky, okay? You can see a beam of light reaching down through the clouds. And this is where the 248 took her to the arm, okay, arm. Judges 528. The mother of Sisera looked out a window and cried through the lattice. Why is his chariot so long in coming? Why tarry the wheels of his chariots? Hebrew 8.2.2 is lattice. Okay. Here, my loves, is lattice. Hebrew 8.2.2 which is in Proverbs 7, 6, also as casement. For at the window of my house, I looked through my casement. Okay, Hebrew 8, 2, 2, casement. And joy swells in Casey's heart as she understands my message. My bride will fully understand also, laughing joyfully. Go to Jeremiah 27, 5. I have made the earth, the man and the beast that are upon the ground, by my great power and by my outstretched arm, and have given it unto whom it seemed meet unto me. Let us get a deeper understanding of my outstretched arm that I revealed to my loyal servant this day. I and Father are one, are we not? Looking closer at Hebrew 5186, my bride will recognize the paradox of mercy and judgment. And you know, the Lord's been showing me judgment and uh, 
mercy messages the whole time on this channel. Like, he gives me both a lot. And that's what he was trying to show me, the paradox. Hebrew 51.86 To stretch or spread out. Apply, bow, carry aside, extend, outstretched. Yep, there's, there's good and good connotations and judgment connotations in this. Mercy and judgment. So we're going to go to Malachi 3.5. And I will come near to you to judgment. And I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers. And against the idolater, uh, adulterers. <laughs> and against false swearers. And against those that oppress the hireling in his wages. The widow and the fatherless. And that turn aside the stranger from his right. And fear not me saith the Lord of hosts. Now examine 1 Chronicles 21, 16. And David lifted up his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord stand between the earth and the heaven, having a drawn sword in his hand, stretched out over Jerusalem. Then David and the elders of Israel who were clothed in sackcloth, fell upon their faces. I stretch mine hand. I stretch mine arm. I wield it in mercy. I wield it in judgment. I am. Go to Ezra 7 to 8. And hath extended mercy unto me before the king and his counselors and before all the king's mighty princes. And I was strengthened as the hand of the Lord my God was upon me. And I gathered together out of Israel chief men to go up with me. I strengthen whom I desire. All of mine shall learn this of me very soon. My bride, as you are already in me, thine arm is outstretched to strengthen you always. Those of my body whom are in Father's hand are at his mercy now. Guys, that stopped on 8 and 11 for God's fingerprint. <laughs> Mine arm part 2, page 2. Before I lay out further scriptures, I tell you that the outstretched hand or arm is thick throughout Father's Word. Take time to seek it out for yourselves. My bride understood the order of things. Yes, we do, Lord. My bride stretched out her hand to me and then to Father. It is statutory. Now go to Ezra 7, and the page just jumped big time. That's confirmation from the Lord himself, family. Now go to Ezra 7 to 8. And hath extended mercy unto me before the king and his counselors, and before all the king's mighty princes, and I was strengthened... That stopped on 919. I'm going to start over because Boogie and Bella just got in a fight, okay? I'm, I'm sure you guys heard that. I calmed it down now. And hath extended mercy unto me before the king and his counselors, and before all the king's mighty princes. And I was strengthened, as the hand of the Lord my God was upon me. And I gathered together out of Israel chief men to go up with me. Ezra 7 to 8, again, with the understanding that Father seeks the stretched hand of His children. 
he will not place his hand upon thee without first seeing humility. Go over to Isaiah 5.25. Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people, and he has stretched forth his hand against them, and hath smitten them. And the hills did tremble, and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. You can clearly see the paradox of mercy and judgment. It is the order of things. Go now to Psalm 18.9. He bowed the heavens also and came down, and darkness was under his feet. Psalm 18 is a great spiritual warfare prayer to family, and it has rapture in it. Here is Hebrew 5.186. To stretch or spread out. Deliver, extend, outstretched. We are still studying Hebrew 5186. This time draweth very near, my loves. Go to Psalm 2111. This time is now, my loves. For they intended evil against thee. They imagined a mischievous device which they are not able to perform. Go to Psalm 31 2. Bow down thine ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be thou my strong rock for an house of defense to save me. David inclined his ear to father, and scripture bears witness to the fact that David learned the father's ways. David humbled himself first, even as a young child herding sheep. David understood to stretch forth toward the father. Father cherishes a seeker who is humble above all else truth i am truth with humility comes obedience to father's ordinances david knew this strong rock glorious is it not before i was i am amen page three mine arm my loves go to mark three five and when he had looked round about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he saith unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. See the deeper meaning in that? I hear the supplications of my bride. Father has received each and every prayer. Mine arm is outstretched once again to the half blind in the flock. I address those who are not yet set upright. The little owls. I call you. I beckon you with dreams and visions. And send your brethren to help you recognize this vital call. Should your heart desire to be the bride, then I direct you to this scripture. Look closely. I am grieved for the hardness of your hearts. My bride is grieved. My bride is woeful over the sisters and brothers who are clearly called 
and yet resist. Those called who resisted are in Father's hand now. Father has called to me and opened his heart to additional ones. So glorious. I am placing a door before these additional half-blind sheep. Go to Acts 26.1 Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. The mystery of restored sight was given to Paul by me. Once Paul was set upright, he understood the paradox of mine outstretched arm. The clock is still moving forward. I pray with my bride for the humility to be crowded out upon the additional ones. Now being called. Now being called. I will bring further truth very quickly, my loves. Pray without ceasing. Your beloved bridegroom, Jesus Christ. Stop time, 9.53 a.m. So, family, the Lord has been giving us puzzle pieces throughout all of these teachings. And I caught one of them today. And Casey and I talked about it. And we've got another clue, too. And it's awesome, and I can't wait to share this. So, in the bidden word, the Lord said, My bride answers when bidden. We have entered this hour. None bidden who declined shall taste. It is so. So, family, the parable, Luke 14, 16. And a certain man made a great supper and bade many. Okay? He's showing us where we are on the timeline. So, remember, everyone made excuses the first time. Alright? And people have declined to come. And so, the Lord Jesus gave them over to Father. They're in Father's hands now. So, what he is doing is saying go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled see he started calling us in and, and we and some made excuses now there's seats to be filled so he's calling in the last group remember this is the final call right to be the bride and get in the philadelphia church so what he's saying is he's outstretching his arm again. He's sending the servant out. He's sending out the servant. Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. We're on the last part. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Everyone who declines to come in the go through the door He's give, and they declined, right? They've been given the Father. He's given these seats to be the bride to others now. He's calling in another group. We're at the last part of the timeline. Right before he takes the bride home. Do you see, family? He just showed us. Let's pray this group comes through the door. And um, makes it in. Okay. So now I'm going to go into the next part. And you can study it out. And go back to the bidding word. And and see what clues you can capture throughout all the teachings. There's there's He's given us puzzle pieces, family. He's showing us the timeline. And we're at the end. We're here. This is the last group to be called in
family that stopped on 22. <laughs> okay, so. The Lord put this truck in front of Casey again today, and she sent me the screenshot of it. Same truck. Okay. She had been given this truck for confirmation in the by faith word. Okay. The, the Lord's teaching by faith. This truck. This is the new picture. He put it in front of her again. The Ram, the white Dodge Ram. And the 724 was the confirmation number in the teaching of that word, by faith. Today, it's 2329. Okay? I'm going to show you how these dots connect. Okay, family. 2329. Hebrew. You look at the bottom, it says circle. Okay? Circle. So, family, in the order of things, part two. Y'all, if you come on new, you really should learn the order of things, part one and two. And then go into the bid. And if you come on new, go back to the beginning. The videos are listed from newest to oldest. Um, it's a lot, but it's worth it because it's the Lord Jesus Christ teaching right now in these end times. It's a miracle, and it's beautiful, and it's it's merciful uh, to call in his bride. It was his plan from the beginning, okay? So, order of things, part two, a revolution, a come about, compass about. My bride, you understand, coming full circle. Father uses coming about in all things, terrestrial and celestial, as well as spiritual. Okay, this is all important. Now I'm going to back up a little bit to November 19th, when the Lord started all of this with four of us sisters to confirm the 212 for Brooklyn and Manhattan and Ezekiel's will, okay, and the message that came with it. There was four of us that started, and then it, it, it came down to me and Casey. Wife, I choose to take from our Lord to our immortality and new life. The Lord chooses to take his wife to our immortality and new life to a room cleanness and pure broken from the curse to be seated and enthroned as his bride to lead up bring up and set sail the three two one one two three okay a rising of desire to boil it, boil up and then henry ruler of the throne and henry the helicopter through sister mustard seed time to fly time to fly lift me off of the ground and it also confirmed the kickoff event for Manhattan there was all kinds of applications in this word okay but he was taking us to the room remember the room right so family back to Roche's word the Lord gave this word to Roche tell my people I am coming on that day and when it happens scream it will happen in the room that we will be in. It will happen in the room that we will be in. And especially those who made YouTube and those who spoke of him are his chosen ones. Remember the bride is called and she's chosen because she goes through the door. And she humbles herself and asks to be restored. I'm like shaking right now. I'm just so excited. Okay. And... When it happens, we will still be in the same room. Okay, what is the room, family? The upper room. He's been taking everybody to the upper room. He was used on the heavens to dance everybody, to bring everybody together, and then show us he's, he's showing us the curse, the twin system of good and evil, and how it's got to be broken, and what the upper room really means, right? The baptism by fire. When the Lord cuts the tether, the circumcision of the left eye, and makes both eyes single, full of his light, 
and then Father puts us on the rock. That's the upper room. Full circle. Father brings everything full circle. It began in the upper room. It will end the same. And remember how so many fell off? And there was only, I don't know the number, of all of them that made it in the upper room. There wasn't that many, right? Everything the Lord did at the beginning, He's doing at the end. It's the full circle. He's doing the same thing. He's calling His people to the upper room for the baptism by fire to be a part of the Philadelphia church and the bride group, right? It's the full circle, and that means it's closing up. It's coming to the end, right? We're at the last part of the bidding. He's bidding the last group now. The full circle is closing, family. That means he is coming. He's coming. He's, he's calling them in. And if they refuse, they won't taste of his supper. Right? I, and they're having such a hard time believing, you know, those that have, have come against what the Lord is doing. What, let me ask everybody, why wouldn't the Lord, in these very end times, start teaching again and start calling them to the upper room? We're at the end. It's coming full, full circle. Do you see the huge confirmation in this? Are you getting it, family? Of course he would do these things. We're at the very end, right before the bridegroom comes. It's the call of the bride. It's the call of the bride. The last group to come in for the bride in the Philadelphia church. It's straight out of Luke. Luke is written to the bride, all of it. Okay? And look and go and read it again with your new spiritual eyes. I'm hearing sirens. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. The baptism by fire, breaking the curse. They're asleep, family, because they're double-minded in a house divided, the little speckled owls. You see, that's what being asleep means, and they're not getting it. We have to keep praying. That this last group makes it in. So he's sending his servants too. We got we gotta call him in, right? He sent the servant out one last time to call in to the to the supper. This is it. So let's pray they come in, release a clear pathway. To them making it through the door, removing every stumbling block out of their path, breaking it, and binding it eternally. So they can make it through the door. So they can make it family. All those who refuse will not go. The Lord has been gradually, gradually showing us the truth. Preparing our hearts. He's been preparing our hearts. Only those who accept the call. Only those who are called and bidden and make it through the door, humble themselves and get put on the rock are the bride. Only the bride goes, family. Little by little, he's been showing us. You can't, he can't covenant with any part that's dark. If they're still under the curse, they're part dark. The Lord is all light. But it's come full circle now. And the bridegroom is coming. So I hope this blessed you. I hope it encouraged you. This is truly it. He just showed us. He just showed us the full circle of it. He is coming to collect his bride. So let's pray, family. Let's prepare our hearts to meet the bridegroom, okay?
Well, I love you guys. God bless you and talk very soon.